Years ago, most men had only the power of their own bodies to work for them. A fortunate few had the power of a horse or two, literal horses. Today, the average worker in an industrial plant has from a few hundred to many thousand horsepower doing the most laborious part of his work. Many of these horsepower come from alternating current motors. Worldwide, more than 90% of the horsepower in stationary applications is supplied by electric motors. You can increase your effectiveness by learning to operate safely and efficiently the AC motors that work for you and by learning to maintain them properly. Among the things you must learn is the electrical distribution system of your refinery, chemical plant, or other plant. You need a general knowledge of the entire system and a thorough knowledge of the system in your own area. Maps, equipment lists, and other references can supplement your memory of details. You must also learn the vital statistics of the AC motors you operate. Vital statistics include nameplate data and information from equipment lists, operating manuals, and other sources. And you must learn how to operate AC motors safely and efficiently. Operating includes starting, making operating checks, stopping, troubleshooting, maintenance, and the use of alarms and controls. You must learn some of these things on the job, but others you can learn from this module in the classroom. The module does not attempt to give you information about the electrical distribution system in your refinery or plant. It does tell you the kind of knowledge you should learn about your system. Nor does the module try to give you specific information concerning the electrical distribution system of your own area. It does tell you the kind of knowledge you should learn. The module discusses the meaning and use of nameplate data on AC motors and the sort of information you may expect to find in equipment lists and operating manuals. Concerning the safe operation of AC motors, the module supplies general information. Specific information about specific motors must be supplied locally. And you can gain facility in the operation of AC motors only on the job. Now turn to your workbook. Read How to Use the Workbook Exercises on page 5. Then, complete exercise number one. Your instructor will give you any help you need. For greatest efficiency in your operation of electrical equipment, you must know the electrical distribution system of your refinery or plant. Some industrial plants generate all or part of the electricity they use. Others buy it from a utility company. In either case, there is at least one relatively high voltage feeder line from the generating plant or from a power transmission line. The number of feeders and the voltage they carry depend on your plant's needs. In one large refinery, more than 20 feeders carry 13,800 volts to various parts of the plant. One of these 13.8 kV feeders supplies electricity to the 14,400 horsepower driver of the refinery's largest compressor. Others carry 13.8 kV electricity to the plant's power distribution centers. The refinery has nearly a dozen, identified as PDC-1, PDC-2, etc. Each PDC is served by two 13.8 feeders. Pairs of PDCs are connected to reduce the effect of losing one or more of the 13.8 feeders. In a few cases, a feeder from a PDC powers a single piece of equipment. From one PDC, for example, one feeder is dedicated to a 9,000 horsepower compressor motor. Most feeders from PDCs go to substations, which one large plant classifies as unit substations or general purpose substations. A unit substation serves a single process unit and in one refinery takes its name from the unit it serves. For example, PSLA-10 substation serves number 10 pipe still. A general purpose substation is not limited to serving a single unit. 
One such substation is S-10, so named because it is on Avenue S and 10th Street. At substations, transformers step down 13,800 volt current to 2,400 volts, 480 volts, 240 volts, 120 volts, or other required voltages. Feeders from substations provide power for equipment. From O5 substation, for example, feeder X4 provides power for pumps numbers 81, 82, and 83, west of tank number 282. In one refinery, X means that the feeder carries 2,400 volts. Y indicates 480 volts. This description of an electrical distribution system is incomplete and nonspecific. It is important that you learn your plant system, especially those parts that serve your equipment. Learn what substation feeders power your equipment and the substations they come from. Learn which feeders can be connected by manual or automatic switches for backup power supply if one feeder should fail. Learn what feeders power your substations and the routing of these feeders. Are they overhead or underground? Do they come from power distribution centers? What PDCs? Where are they? How are PDCs powered? Especially learn your emergency procedures, what you must do and whom you must notify when something goes wrong with your electrical system. Turn to your workbook now and complete exercise number two. If you have any questions, ask your instructor. You can operate AC motors more safely and efficiently if you know their characteristics and especially their limitations. A great deal of information can be learned from a motor's nameplate. Much of the nameplate data is required by the National Electrical Code, but manufacturers usually include even more data than the code requires. The first of the code's marking requirements is the maker's name. In this case, the maker's name is stated, and three of the company's registered trademarks are also included. The rated volts and full load amperes must also be stated. This motor may be wired to operate at either 230 or 460 volts. Note the wiring diagrams included for the electrician's guidance. At 230 volts, this motor draws 13.6 amperes. At 460 volts, it draws 6.8 amperes. The code further requires that the rated full load speed be stated. This motor's rated speed is 1735 revolutions per minute. The manufacturer has the option of including either the rated temperature rise or the insulation system class and the rated ambient temperature. In this case, the manufacturer has chosen the latter. The winding wires of this motor have class B insulation, good for operation at a maximum ambient temperature of 40 degrees centigrade. Class B insulation is safe for sustained operation when the hottest spot in the motor windings does not get hotter than 130 degrees centigrade, which is equivalent to 266 degrees Fahrenheit. Ambient means surrounding. This motor is designed for operation in a space where the temperature is not more than 40 degrees centigrade or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperature rise means temperature increase. So the manufacturer could have chosen to rate this motor as rise 90 degrees centigrade. The time rating must be stated. That is, the length of time the motor can be run continuously without damage under design conditions. The usual ratings are 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and continuous. The time rating for this motor is 24 hours. On some nameplates, this rating is listed as time, on others as duty. Rated horsepower is a required listing for all motors of one-eighth horsepower or higher. 
This motor is rated at 5 horsepower. KVA means kilovolt amperes. The locked KVA code is an indication of the power per horsepower drawn from the electric power lines at the instant the motor is started. The code letter for this motor is J. The National Electrical Manufacturers Association has adopted a standard and published a table showing codes and their equivalents. J equals 7.1 to 7.99 kilovolt amperes per horsepower. The service factor of this motor is 1.15. This factor times the rated horsepower equals the motor's overload capacity. Some motors have a service factor of 1.0. They cannot be overloaded safely. This motor can operate at 5.75 horsepower if other specified conditions are maintained. However, the operator must watch for possible overheating. Also, the motor's efficiency and speed may suffer. Three phase and 60 cycle refer to the required electrical current, not normally controlled by the operator. Model TBDP means that the motor is the maker's trademarked Lifeline T-Line, design B, in a drip-proof housing. Design B refers to certain characteristics of the motor that make it a good driver for machine tools, centrifugal pumps, and fans. We will discuss drip-proof and other housings later. Most of the remaining information consists of the manufacturer's identifying numbers for the motor, or some of its parts. On this particular nameplate, space has been left for a user number. The purchaser may elect to put his own identification number here or elsewhere. Some plants call such a number the yard number. It is different for each motor. Some plants put the yard or user number on a separate tag and attach it to the motor where it can be seen easily. Your own unit's equipment lists are also sources of information about AC motors. Your lists may contain a minimum of information but it is useful and easy to find and remember. An equipment list may contain such useful information as the maximum allowable current draw and the substation providing current for each motor. A unit or area map may pinpoint the location of motor-driven equipment. The legend may contain a considerable amount of information about each piece of equipment. A lubrication chart supplied by many plants specifies the proper lubricants for motors and many other kinds of equipment, both rotating and reciprocating. See your chart for your specific requirements. Especially where computer time is available, mechanical or mechanical engineering groups may be able to provide electric motor lists containing very useful information. In one such situation, the computer is programmed to print motor lists by yard number, serial number, manufacturer, horsepower, and location. The first few columns of a typical yard number list are yard number, horsepower, RPM, motor type, and voltage. Yard number 8766, for example, is rated at 450 horsepower. It makes 3600 RPM. Its type is not listed. It requires 2300 volts. Continuing across the page, column headings are rotation from coupling end, frame number, manufacturer, and insulation type. Our example motor rotates counterclockwise. Its frame number is 505WS. It was manufactured by General Dynamics. Its insulation type is not listed. The next two column headings are enclosure type and unit or area. The enclosure type of our example is not given. The unit is 2 PHLA. That is, number 2 power former. The next column heading is service description. The motor we are following is in feed service. The last two column headings are unit item number and driven equipment. This motor has the unit identification number M2A. 
It drives a centrifugal pump. Yard number 10648. The forums in which information is available to you are likely to be different from this discussion. But information is available to you. Therefore, note well that learning the vital statistics of your motors is your responsibility. Now turn to your workbook and complete exercise number three. If you need further information, ask your instructor.